Greetings, this is Darvan and welcome to a new Let's Play for this channel. This is Elder Scrolls of the Arena. Released back in 1994, making this game nearly 30, year old, 30 years old and is the first in the Elder Scrolls series. Um, according to the designers, the reason it's called Arena was because originally this was going to be a game about gladiators traveling from town to town and as they added in the role-playing elements they realized that they actually had a better role-playing game than they did arena combat game but the title and the marketing stuff had already been finished to say arena so they were kind of stuck with it well you know um I have tried to do this game before. It is a, another long game. Um, one of the better games, actually, in, term, in terms of length, if you like big, long, grindy, get old games, simply because this is one of those games that you can live in, if you don't mind a lot of repetition. Last time I played, I did the um, Generation went through the whole character selection and came out as a ranger uh, but I've had a look through it and I've decided I'm going to do this one and I'm going to choose and I'm going to be a nut the reason being I like sword and board it's very easy to play um, knights and warriors are the only classes that can use plate armour and plate armour is the only armour that can be enchanted in a game where if you're not a spellcaster you get absolutely no access to spells at all you have to rely on potions and magical items being able to um, have enchanted armor is very 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 good unfortunately it also means that you need to be very very strong to carry it all the other advantage that knights have is that as well as keeping all that nice shiny armor refresh you don't spend as much time repairing it along with their weapons they are immune to paralysis so there will be no we get stuck by a ghoul and duel to death although there will be more pretty much lots and lots and lots and lots of saves coming on imagine these games are notorious for it and it is no pushover now this is back in the days before custom classes custom classes started actually in the next game Daggerfall and uh, where uh, where basically everybody could you could create your class to literally do pretty much everything and the classes I usually go for ended up being more paladin like the knights there is no obviously there is no paladin type class the knight is the closest that we get into it So we're going to select our class. I mean, there's a lot of options to choose from. They're very, very similar in various shades of uh, well, you're thief and mage, basically. But we're going to go with the knight. I will be Davain, no apostrophe. Um, I make the mistake sometimes of putting the apostrophe in and 
as my hand was supposed to be, based on my original character. And it splits it in half, which is damn annoying, because I get the entire game where it's just, yo, duh. So, duh. Red guards, yes. Okay, so this is us, which your classic old school role playing game. Um, ability scores. These really haven't changed much. 
strength, intelligence, willpower, agility, speed, endurance, personality, and luck. We have health, fatigue, and gold. Anyone who's played Skyrim will know this was still coming. We start with 700 experience because, you know, yeah. But we are level one. And yes, this is an experience driven game. It wouldn't become skill based until the next game, which is Daggerfall. Okay, we are, like I said, we expl explained the knight. We can use any w weapons and armor, especially plate mail. And our bonus is, is we cannot be paralyzed, although we have ridiculously low magic defense at the moment. We need to get that up as soon as ever. We're going to get wrecked as soon as we see mages, which we'll see a lot of. Um, melee is done by agility, not strength. So that's good. And red guards, red guards have the ability that their combat skill goes up as they gain levels. So we're going to be very good at hitting stuff with swords. The question is, if we might get how easy we're going to get wrecked while we hit with swords, until we've bulked ourselves out, really. Um, but again, as well as to it, is to def defend. So ag agility is sort of the, the super uber stat. If it wasn't for the fact that because we want armor, we also need strength, which does also adds to melee damage eventually, and of course will because we want to increase our magic defense. Our dump stat is intelligent simply because we don't use magic. Um, luck applies to pretty much everything. Charisma gives you better reactions dealing with people, which is okay. Speed is how fast you move. You will notice as your speed speed increases, you do move quite fast. And endurance, you know, classic, as to your health, extra health per level. That is retroactive as you increase endurance and your heal modifier which is how fast you heal when resting like how much you rest per hour and like at all old school games you're going to spend a lot of time unrealistically amounts of time essentially sleeping in for dun in dungeons as if nothing that as if nothing napping and that's what you do all the time okay so here is our defense. Now it starts at plus 10 and goes down. Lower the better. Because these rep basically represent how easy we are to hit. We already have a plus 3 bonus, so we're at plus 7. But that's all. We, uh, that's, we don't start off with any armor. However, we do start off with a broadsword. So let's equip that. Let's have a look at that. Damage 1 to 12. Okay. get you out thing is we're in the Imperial Dungeons and this is one of the few pre-designed dungeons in the game so I'm in Imperial Dungeons starting dungeons know them like the back of my hand so but the aim here is we want to try and get a few levels and Get as much experience, uh, uh, get as much experience as equipment as we can carry out. So, we want to be far. You're awakened to the drift of water from somewhere above. The cell walls are covered in slime, as are the chains which hang from above. Your eye, however, immediately goes to the strange ruby, ruby glint from the corner of your cell. Yep. She's over here. Ruby key. Okay. Now all the quest dungeons and the artifact dungeons are set, as well are the dungeons that contain the map pieces to locating those dungeons. Other than that, every other dungeon is randomized from and modular, and there are also a whole bunch of set piece maps that basically build a more or less infinite world, but we'll get to dealing with that, because, this, like I said, this is a game that you can live in, and I will show you that. First off, though... <coughs> the 
This is loot. And we're close enough. There we go. We have. Okay, we'll take that. Now, longsword. If it's blue, it means it's magical, but we don't know what it does. But for now, it's better than what we got, so that'll do. A mark's are like a charm. You can have one mark that there's a couple of other things that you can have. They weigh next to nothing. But you're still limited to the amount of inventory slots that you have, so... Let's get this going, because quite frankly... Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of saving and reloading in this game, no doubt. Said, I know this like the back of my hand. Usual practice is to kind of explore the outside, try and find where you're going, and try and find all the everything. Now this this is water, and it's in a hole. That is essentially a pit, but they can form tunnels under the walls and stuff and sometimes they're empty sometimes they're full of water and sometimes they're full of lava but it can make exploring the dungeons quite interesting there's us beating on goblins already As well as tunnels, you get niches. So basically, you've got three layers of each level. Other than that, it's fairly flat. Seems safe to rest in these niches. You think the rats and other creatures may not smell you with the draft that runs so close to the floor. Basically, in the sighting dungeon, if you rest in these niches, you will not get random encounters. Trust me, that is uh, the bane of most of, of all the early, of bane of everything and literally once you get out of this dungeon you are going to miss that. Now you can speed run this game. I'm just gonna take it and see how it goes. This might take a few years, it could take, might run it in the background or something else, you know. We're gonna see how, that, how, how playing this goes. Okay. Now you can detect secret doors, but they won't necessarily, they'll show up on your map, but they won't show up unless you've got random clicking. Now here's us. See, this is how you know it goes underneath. Kill these rats while they munch us to death. But yeah, we can go under there. But however, that counts as swimming, and if you run out of stamina, which is the, gr the green bar, I believe. No, nope. fatigue, which is the red bar, you will drown. Instant death. So, yeah. Yay. All that for that. Am I? Not a brilliant start, but hey, it's what we'll do. Except once you're out of health, you are dead. Dead. Deader than disco. Oh, well, hopefully that wasn't too loud. It's uh, on the approach to fireworks night. But as you can see, that tunnel goes up here. And we could follow that round. Not going to, though.
because you can pretty much explore this entire thing without having to go through any tunnels. Like I said, this is a set dungeon, so... And pretty much, yeah. Anybody who's ever played this game enough times will probably be able to memorise this like the back of their hand. Or probably better. A level of experience, which means level up. Oh, hey, oh, goody. Well, let's boost our luck, and then the odd points we are going to be putting on strength because we need to be able to have as high a strength as possible to carry everything we're going to need. The good thing is, is by leveling up, we heal. Yeah, and as you see, we have max kilos. This is literally the, the total weight of everything we can carry. We cannot become encumbered. We're literally, if you can't carry or hold it, you can't carry it, you can't lift it, there's nothing. And there's no coming back to this dungeon either. a sprite based game Yes, let's find out what's going on. No, nope, can't camp. Got to kill enemies. Okay, we'll take those. What do you got? We have bracelet. That's another magic item. Although they're traditionally just modifiers, and as you can see, we put on the bracelet. It has provided us a bit of armor, so that's not bad. A dwarven longsword is basically a better version of a longsword, although heavier. That it's dwarven is yellow, so. We will be using that until we find out what the other longsword does. Treasure piles are placed, but the treasure itself is random.
Okay, we can camp for a while. This basically, camp for a while is like, how many hours do we want to rest? Whereas until fully healed is until we're fully healed. I mean, there's somebody nearby. Death to rat. I see you have strengthened your arm and your mind. It is time we began this journey. This is the Staff of Chaos. The one item that can open the door between this world and the dimension to which the Emperor has been banished. Tharn used this item to destroy my corporeal form when I tried to warn the Council. He knew that the Staff of Chaos was nigh indestructible, having been made from the essence of the land itself. But in that, he found the key. As the land is split, so did he shatter the staff into eight perfectly formed pieces. These he scattered across the realm. I have been able to divine the location of the first piece. A place called Fang Lair. It is said that Fang Lair was originally built by the dwarves of Kragan. Legend has it that a great worm drove the dwarves from their home in the dragon's teeth and took the lair for itself. I only wish I knew the exact location. Perhaps there are sages or scholars who would know of this place. Somewhere in its dank depths lies the first piece of the Staff of Chaos. I wish you well. I do not think Thar knows of your escape, but I can do little else in this form. I have tried to obscure your identity with a spell, but I do not know how well it will hide you. Take care, for Tharn may be searching. Go forth with the blessings of the true Emperor, and myself. Yay, we are healed. And with that, we have what we are basically trying to do in this game the whole aim for the main storyline and it is literally just the main storyline you know, like I said this is a world you could live in forever and back in the day a lot of people did um, where essentially is we get out of this dungeon we end up in a town we try to find out what we can about Fang Lao um, we eventually find Fang Lair and find the first piece of the Staff of Chaos. And then we'll go around and find the missing staff until we have uh, all, all eight pieces put together to do whatever. And yeah, it sounds quick and it can be rushed if all you're going to do is stick to the dungeons. But even then, that is still a, that is still quite a big run of a game. And if you want to do any of the added stuff, well, there's literally no end as far as I'm aware. So, anyway, I'm going to call it there. This has been Darvain doing a Let's Play The Elder Scrolls Arena. If you like what you're seeing here, be sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. Please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. And until next time, goodbye.